PSP Zenon is a transparent brick wall limiter with built-in leveling amp designed for mastering. It can be used to maximize audio while retaining a pure clean sound with low aliasing and intermodulation distortion. Unlike most additional limiters, it uses two stages to do this, which avoids the problems conventional limiters can have when dealing with transients. We'll look at the two stages in more detail shortly, but first we'll take a brief overview of the interface. It's divided into three sections. The input section to the left, where various parameters controlling the input stage are found. The metering section in the center indicates level of the input stage, the amount of gain reduction being applied and final output levels. And beneath the metering section is the power switch for turning processing on and off. Finally, the output stage to the right where the second stage processing and output controls are found. So let's take a closer look at the controls and hear what they do and how they interact together. We'll start with the input stage. This has several purposes, including to control how many transits are treated at this stage or allowed through unaltered to the second stage, to control the treatment on those that don't pass through unaffected and to set the level of the material being passed to the second stage. At the top of the input stage are two buttons that relate to the envelope detector settings. Order, when turned on, uses second order filters for the envelope detector, which will change the release shape of the envelope and result in less aliasing. When the oversample option is active, it will help to allow maximum loudness with no fear of any intersample peaks that otherwise might be missed exceeding 0 dB. The three transient buttons, along with the transient parameter, control how transients are treated. The three transient modes first. A will hard clip any transient peaks and results in obvious distortion as it does so. For some styles, this might be what you want. B and C both use look ahead with envelope detectors catching any peaks and limit their level in a more gentle and transparent manner. The differences between the two is the look ahead times. C has greater look ahead and attack and release time, so game reduction starts earlier and releases later. The transient parameter controls how much of each transient is allowed through to the second level processing stage without being treated at this first stage. Low values here will deal with more transients at this first stage, softening the transients, but also reducing the chances of distortion. Higher values allow more natural sounding transient peaks through, but at the risk of more distortion. The release parameter unsurprisingly controls the release times for the first stage. Lower values will increase the perceived level of material, but are more likely to introduce distortion. Higher values maintain the clarity of material, but at a reduced perceived level. The input knob adjusts the level of the incoming audio, allowing control over the signal sent to the limiter. High settings increase the level and lower ones reduce it. You'll find that there is a level at which increasing this doesn't increase the perceived volume and just adds a pumping effect. Remember that the higher the level of this control, the more the dynamic range of the material is compressed. A high compression level can soon become fatiguing to listen to. Less is more thinking applies here. Post controls the position of the input control in relation to the input meter. With this switch off, input is before the meter, which will reflect changes made to the input control. Post switches it after the meter, which will then reflect the incoming signal level prior to any adjustments of the input control. Let's see and hear how this input stage works. I'm going to start playback and for purposes of this demonstration, increase the input level to a higher level than I normally would just to overemphasize the effect of the controls. I'm going to increase the input level so that between 8 to 12 dB of gain reduction is taking place. Remember this is purposely high for demonstration purposes. Notice that at 100% the transients are quite hard and have an audible edge to them as they are passing through this first stage almost completely unprocessed. As I reduce the control, transients become noticeably softer as they're now being treated by the input stage with very little passing through unaffected. 
switching the input predict mode to C will further soften them as the look ahead increases and treatment is applied earlier. Now let's hear the effect the release control has. As I decrease this, you'll hear the perceived volume increase, but note that as the times reduce, distortions introduced. Now we've looked at the first stage, let's take a look at the second. At the top is the word length requantize section, a process worthy of a brief explanation. As the limiter is usually the last process in the mastering stage, the bit depth of the material might need to be reduced to match the target media specifications. For example, material recorded and processed at 24 bit will need reducing to 16 bit if CD is the intended medium. Very briefly, whenever bit depth reduction of audio takes place, some of the information in the lower bits is lost as they are removed. If they're just removed without any sort of processing, distortion is introduced, albeit at a very low level. The quantize section uses a process known as dithering to reduce the distortion to acceptable levels. Very briefly, dithering creates a more pleasant musical type of distortion that is less noticeable. It may well be that the host system has its own dithering process which could be used, but either way, dithering should only be applied when reducing bit depth, and that should preferably only be done once. Dithering material that isn't having its bit depth reduced actually adds noise, not reduces it. With that in mind, let's look at the options here. The on-off button turns the process on or off. It will need to be on for the other buttons to be active. The auto block button will automatically stop dithering in periods of silence. As I've already mentioned, the dithering process introduces its own noise. Using this button will stop all that noise whenever silence is detected, between songs for example. The bit depth control sets the target bit depth. It cycles through 8, 16 or 24. Choose the one that you require here. The noise shape button cycles through the available process choices which are based on isophonic curve of the human auditory system. C is the closest to that curve. If it's off, white noise is applied using a triangular process based on probability. Beneath the word length section we find the leveler control. This sets the threshold level of the leveling amplifier used in the second stage. This leveling amplifier can be used to adjust the signal prior to the limiter. When it's on 100%, it's effectively off, which will maintain the original dynamics of the material. As it's reduced, more gain reduction is eventually applied, but the envelope detector for this is very slow, so takes time after the threshold has been exceeded. This control can help greatly in maximising loudness as it reduces pumping artefacts. The link parameter controls how much the material on one channel controls limiter processing on the other. At 100%, the channels are fully linked and any limiting triggered by one channel is applied equally to the other. This control can also help maximise loudness by reducing it down to zero so that both the left and right channels operate independently of one another. The same limiter settings are used on each channel they just don't get applied unless that particular channel triggers it. This makes for louder material overall, but might also introduce stereo imaging problems as the limiter processing fluctuates from left to right. Use this control to find a good balance between maximising loudness without affecting the stereo image. The output control sets the ceiling level for the limiter. Left at 0 dB, the full dynamic range is allowed, but this can be reduced to allow for intersample peaks. Remember though that the oversample control in the input stage can be turned on to prevent intersample peaks ever exceeding 0 dB. The auto button is a helpful way of automatically compensating for level for AB comparisons when turning off the power button. Before we take a listen back to the leveler, let's look at the metering section. The three stereo meters from left to right display levels for input, gain reduction and output. 
As I've already mentioned, the input meter can be either pre or post input gain control. Numeric displays beneath each meter show and hold exact maximums reached. The gain reduction meter displays gain reduction from three possible sources. The first and second stage limiters as well as the level. Any combination can be on together or each one isolated as required. I'll start playback and then reduce the leveler setting which is effectively levelling the dynamics of the material out. Remember that while this ultimately allows for greater loudness, it is at the expense of dynamic range. By switching all the gain reduction meters off except the levelers, we'll clearly be able to see as well as hear when gain reduction is being applied by it. The scale of the gain reduction meter can be changed by clicking on the zoom button. That will change the gain reduction scale length from minus 24 dB to minus 12 dB. The mode buttons control the mode of the meters. When peak is lit, meters show sample peak values. Beneath that is a button that cycles through the K metering system. Recon attempts to reconstruct any intersample peaks that may be created by the DA converters. Remember that using the oversample button on the input stage will ensure that no intersample peaks exceed 0 dB. The Calib button is there for system calibration. It will play pink noise at the RMS level set by the K meter mode button. It's possible to send a signal through the left and right channels one at a time or simultaneously. Finally, along the bottom are the bank, preset and AB save and load controls. The red arrows are used to save the relevant bank, preset or AB comparisons, while the green arrows are used to load. Presets can be renamed by clicking in the name field and selected by clicking on the preset load icon. Now let's hear it in use again and take advantage of the auto button. That's really helpful for getting a proper comparative AB between the processed and unprocessed audio as the Zenon is switched in and out. And that's the PSP Zenon Mastering Limited, a superb transparent limiter for maximising the loudness of your mixers.